The verdicts have arrived for the new iPhone XR and your October event preview. Let's get right to the core of this week's Apple News and Rumors. The reviews are in for the iPhone XR and I've been reading a lot of them so that you don't have to. Now, bottom line, is that this one seems to be the iPhone for most people. It has everything you need on an iPhone, and it's $250 less than the iPhone XS. If you are coming from an iPhone 6, 7, or 8, it is gonna seem like a huge step forward. Now, the biggest difference on this phone, or at least what the reviews seem to say, is the screen. LCD versus OLED, which we already knew. But for most people, it's not going to make much of a difference unless you're comparing them side by side or if you're coming from an OLED display, whether that's an Android phone or an iPhone 10. But you're probably not going to switch from a 10 to a 10R anyway. The other difference in screen is that the bezels are thicker than on the 10s and the 10s Max. But again, if you're coming from a 6, 7 or 8, they're a lot thinner because it's edge to edge. So it kind of doesn't matter. Now, portrait mode is going to be different on this phone as well. The 10s and the 10s Max use that second telephoto lens to create this effect, but the 10R does it with software only. Now, the good thing about it is that you are gonna get a wider angle portrait shot, and it's also better in low light. Now, the bad news is that it only works for humans, so if you're obsessed with your dog, like I am, portrait mode is not going to work. It also doesn't work on any objects. The other thing to point out that may make a difference is the fact that it has a different type of glass on the back. It doesn't have that super durable glass on both sides of the phone like the 10s. So it has an aluminum frame and not as durable of a glass on the back, meaning it's probably going to break faster. So you're going to want a case on this. And of course, I'm going to have to try this out. So stay tuned for our drop test to come later on this week iPhone XR pre-orders kicked off just after midnight on Friday, October 19th. I know because I was up late ordering our iPhone for our drop test. And they're arriving in stores on October 26th. Now in the past, these early pre-sale numbers have clued us in on how well the phone is actually going to sell. And within the first 24 hours, none of the models seem to have delays. Later on though, the 128 gigabyte colored versions seem to have one to two week delays, especially for the T-Mobile carrier. Now, does this mean that there's less demand for the iPhone XR? Probably not. It all depends on how many Apple has in stock. In fact, analyst Ming-Chi Kuo still maintains that this one is going to be the best seller in the long run for Apple, doing better than last year's iPhone 8. And that's TBD, of course. Now, remember Beautygate? It seems like we're not quite done with this issue quite yet. This was the issue where users were reporting a smoothing effect on selfies taken from the front camera. And originally we thought that it was due to the smart HDR, which was kind of leveling out the highlights and lowlights and making skin appear more even. Now, this may still be the case, but Apple is now addressing it in the next iOS 12.1 upgrade. This according to a report originally published in The Verge. Does this mean that Apple is finally admitting that there was a problem in the first place? But let's leave all that in the past and take a look forward because that October event is almost here. And the next time I see you guys, we're gonna have a whole new lineup of Apple products to discuss. Now, what are we expecting? Well, first off, two new iPad Pros. Rumors point at an iPhone X-like redesign for the iPad line with slimmer bezels and face ID, but no notch this time. And it's not clear whether or not it will have an OLED display. Now the newest rumors are saying that it's gonna have that liquid retina display like the 10R. Here you can see this render in 9 to 5 Mac which shows an 11 inch display and a 12.9 inch display. They're not gonna have a headphone jack, but they are gonna have a 4K video output. Now, Apple could be getting rid of the lightning port in the new iPad Pros, replacing it for a USB-C charger. This according to Ming-Chi Kuo and now Mako Takara as cited in Forbes. Now, based on the reports, we're also expecting a cheaper MacBook. In this case, it could be finally the sequel to the MacBook Air, which could be 13 inches or 12 inches, depending on what rumor you read. It will have slimmer bezels and a red in a display and that Touch ID support with a USB-C charger like the new MacBook Pros. And the price tag is still kind of up in the air. Originally, we thought it was going to cost $999 like the previous MacBook Air, but now a new Digit Times report says that it's going to cost $1,200. 
And the Mac Mini could finally get a refresh as well, with new storage options and a better processor, but this all is going to raise the price as well, and it's probably going to cost more than the $500 that it costs right now. Other products that could also make an appearance at this event include iMacs, AirPods with that wireless charging case that we've been waiting for, a next generation Apple Pencil with less lag time, a smaller, cheaper HomePod to compete with the Google Home Mini and the Amazon Echo Dot, and lastly, the Air Power Mat. It's been more than a year now. Next week, we are going to be live on Apple Event Day, so join us 30 minutes before the actual event. So that's 9.30 a.m. on October 30th if you're on New York time, or if you're on San Francisco time like me, it's going to be an early start. 6.30 a.m. Join us at Cena.com or on YouTube, and make sure to hit us up on Twitter or on YouTube with your first impressions of all the new Apple products and maybe your first impressions of the iPhone XR if you happen to purchase it this week as well. And join me next week with more Apple Core.